All right. And looks like we had a couple folks waiting. That's great. All right. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening, folks. My name is Ian Capazzoli. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at WPI. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, for Aerospace Engineering and wanted to learn a little bit more about the department. Uh, before I hand things over to Professor Gatsonis, just a quick bit of housekeeping. Uh, so this is a webinar style format. So uh, you folks can't use the chat function or raise your hand, but you can use the Q&A function, which should be either at the top or the bottom of your screen. So feel free to uh, ask questions throughout. We're going to have about 15 minutes probably at the end to answer some of those for you. Uh, and I'll be typing along as well, answering when I can uh, in the meantime. So without further ado, I will pass it over to you, Professor. Uh, thank you, Ian. Uh, good evening, everyone. I cannot see you, but I hope you can see me and you can hear me. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate all of you for your uh, major accomplishment. I know it has been a long journey and uh, you're close to uh, making a selection now. So what I want to do tonight is try as much as I can to help you make this uh, selection of your school. Um, I know all of you are interested in aerospace engineering, so uh, um, that's my focus tonight. I will try to differentiate WPI with the other programs that offer the degree in aerospace engineering. And I'm gonna leave uh, uh, quite some room at the end. I'll take probably 25 minutes or so. Uh, so uh, you can uh, answer questions and uh, uh, you, you can pull, post your questions so we can answer all of them. Uh, so uh, again, I'm Professor Gatsonis. I'm the department head of the Aerospace Engineering Department at WPI. And what you see here on this uh, first screen pretty much encapsulates uh, WPI. Uh, to the right here, I guess all of you recognize Robert Goddard. Uh, so uh, that's our history. And uh, the rest is just our present and uh, hopefully our future too. So you see some pictures here, and I'm just gonna go briefly through them. This is actually a picture of one of our electric propulsion devices. These are thrusters that we use for spacecraft. And some of you, if you join WPI, you, you will have a chance to work as, a, as either as an undergraduate or a BSMS student uh, with uh, faculty that work in this area of, uh, of research. Uh, you see here, Professor Blandino in one of our vacuum chambers. And uh, these are one of the chambers we use for projects and also research and we test uh, space hardware. Then uh, to the left, obviously, right, one of the uh, uh, aircraft and mini aircraft that we build for competitions that a student are participating. A rocket, again, part of a competition. One of these little designs here that you see is again, uh, part of a competition. This is the SAE competition. A small uh, spacecraft CubeSats, I'm sure most of you have heard about those. It's right here, designed by our students. And then rocketry here, we do build the uh, rockets, both them in terms of uh, club uh, activities and also part of our projects, the MQPs. So that's what you do, right? So we cover all the, uh, all the bases there. And uh, before I move on to what WPI is all about, I want to spend a few slides uh, walking through the aerospace engineering as a major, because that's what you're after. So let's uh, set some uh, uh, facts uh, straight. Uh, there are about 80 programs in the country that offer the Bachelor of Science BS degree in Aeronautical, Astronautical or Aerospace Engineering. Now we are one of them and we offer the degree in Aerospace Engineering as most of these programs do. So one thing to uh, remember is Aerospace Engineering programs are much uh, smaller in number in comparison to other programs that you may be thinking about. For example, Mechanical Engineering, which probably is in the hundreds. Uh, or electrical uh, so uh, so that's uh, fact number one. And number two, I have here some uh, data. These are from 17, 18. They haven't changed by much, uh, but these are data of the bachelor degrees that are awarded by engineering discipline. And what I highlighted here is aerospace, about 4,500 degrees. This is what uh, how many degrees we are we awarded in that year. Not WPI, in the entire country. Now compare that to mechanical engineering, which is close to 32,000, or electrical engineering, which is close to 14,000. So aerospace engineering is a small discipline, it's a very selective discipline. Uh, so you're gonna be uh, uh, always uh, among a select group of students, select by meaning the discipline is small, right? In comparison to other disciplines. And the same is true in the master's uh, degrees, about 1,500 in 2017, 18, compared to 10,000, for example, in mechanical engineering, I'm just picking that uh, discipline. Uh, so uh, so that's uh, fact number one. 
a few programs in the country, a relative small number of degrees compared to other traditional engineering disciplines. So you're going to be uh, embedded in a small cohort, no matter where you are. Now, second, I just to say it, uh, this uh, uh, straight, uh, what is that we do as aerospace engineers? I'm sure all of you do. So I'm just going to breeze through that. So we do research design, development, testing, construction as aerospace engineers of all air and space vehicles. Uh, so uh, I have aircraft here of all sizes for civilian applications, aircraft for defense applications, again, of various sizes, various uh, um, functionality. Uh, so this is part of our portfolio, uh, aircraft. Then rotorcraft is also part of our portfolio, again, from uh, large to small size uh, for civilian defense applications. Again, you see different shape, different functionality, different design requirements. So rotorcraft is also part of our portfolio. UAVs, you know, they've been increasing constantly over the years in functionality, and we do a lot of those uh, uh, as aerospace engineers, both for civilian and defense applications. Uh, then we are involved in launch vehicles, both for um, access to space, as you see here, some of the rockets that you, you probably have seen on television, some of those, and also for defense applications as well. And then we are involved in spacecraft. Uh, both for commercial, uh, scientific, and the defense applications. And again, spacecraft range from very large to very small, these cubes as the tiny spacecraft that I showed you before. Uh, some of them we design right here in our, uh, in our program. So that's what aerospace engineers do. And that's what you're going to do as an air. That is what you're going to do if you graduate with a degree in aerospace engineering. So where do we, uh, where do aerospace engineers are employed? Uh, the aerospace and defense industry is one of the largest in the US. Uh, it's uh, the only high tech manufacturing sector which has a positive, positive trade balance. So we do export aerospace engineering products. And industry employs millions of people, both in commercial space, in what we call national security and defense, uh, and then a lot about a, a million and a half and more in what we refer to as supply chain uh, jobs. Uh, uh, jobs that are related to uh, aerospace engineering products. Um, so it's a huge uh, industry. Uh, just in the um, corridor here, in the East Corridor alone, uh, we have uh, thousands of uh, employed uh, people in aerospace engineering and a lot of uh, industrial establishments from very small to very large. So very robust industry. And I'm going to talk to you about employment at the end so you can see where do we place our students uh, at WPI. Now, let's look into the department now at WPI, a small an overview. You know, we've been granting the BS degree since uh, 2004, 2005. Um, we are a department since uh, 2020. Um, I show here some of the uh, data, the degrees that we've been awarding and the enrollment. The department has about 320 students, undergraduate students, and about 50 graduate students, so about 370. We're the sixth largest major WPI. Uh, and uh, that's uh, uh, where we uh, stand in comparison to other uh, departments at WPI. Uh, faculty, there's 10 faculty employed in the department. All of us are teaching courses, and uh, all of our courses are, are taught by faculty. The faculty are uh, split in disciplines, uh, in propulsion and uh, energy, aerodynamics. Then we have a faculty in uh, flight dynamics, flight mechanics, and the controls, and also faculty in materials and the structures. So we have a faculty embedded in all the areas that make, um, that are common in all the aerospace systems that I shared with you uh, before. Now, we have also a lot of laboratories, and um, those uh, laboratories are used for instruction, they use for projects, and uh, uh, so uh, chances are that you're going to uh, uh, lay foot and use some of this equipment. For example, we have aerodynamic test facilities, vacuum chambers that I showed to you, um, equipment for aerospace structures and materials, combustion research laboratories, and teaching laboratories. We have a special dedicated experimental laboratory where we do a lot of hands-on with uh, our courses. Uh, and then again, fluid dynamics, laboratories for autonomy. As I said, we have a large portfolio on uh, UAVs and the fluid plasmas and all uh, uh, that make uh, uh, aerospace systems um, uh, fly. So uh, those labs, again, are used for teaching and research. 
and uh, they are open for undergraduates. So that's a, a characteristic of WPI that you need to keep uh, aside when you're making a selection. Uh, now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the BS degree in aerospace engineering. So in, uh, uh, and in order to do that, we need to go a little bit through the WPI system. In WPI, we have terms, we don't have semesters, and we don't have quarters, we have terms. These are seven week terms. During the seven week terms, classes meet daily. So when you take aerodynamics, you're gonna meet daily with your uh, uh, instructor for this seven week uh, period. Uh, now, during the year, uh, the year has four terms, and then we have two terms in the summer. So we have six terms total. Now, the WPI uh, BS degree requires 15 of these terms, which is not exactly four years. It's four years minus one term. So we leave one term open, and this term can be used for other things. Um, uh, so, for example, um, you can uh, do minors, you can do double majors, you may repeat a course if it's necessary. Uh, so 15 terms is the, is the nominal stay for a, a BS degree. Now, if some of you, a lot of you will come with 80 credits and the actual stay will be less than 15 terms uh, actually. Now, uh, the, uh, this typical seven week uh, uh, course is equivalent to what we refer to WBI as a one third unit. So we don't use the notion of credits, but each one of these credit uh, courses, one third units is equivalent to a three credit course, which is the nominal for courses in other undergraduate and graduate institutions. Now, a typical load for a student is to take three third units, which is three courses per term. So this is what you need to remember. In WPI, you're going to be taking the equivalent of three courses per term. And we're gonna, you are going to have four terms during the academic year. And if you want to accelerate, we have also two terms in the summer where you can take, a, and we offer courses so you can speed up the process of graduation. Now, the BS degree obviously is uh, mandates certain uh, of these uh, credits of these uh, units, and uh, but there are also units that are mandated by, by WPI overall, regardless of the engineering degree that you're going to pursue. So I'm going to go briefly here uh, through these uh, degree requirements. So overall, uh, uh, we require 45 units. Uh, out of these 45 units, 30 are regulated by us, the aerospace engineering department. I'm going to go over them in a little bit more details. But there are other uh, elements of the curriculum that you need to fulfill, degree requirements. So six courses have to go to humanities and arts. Uh, three courses equivalent go to the IQP. This is one of the major projects that you're going to do at WPI. As a, so as a junior, the IQP uh, is a project that combines society, technology, uh, science, uh, engineering, and um, the majority of these projects are done in the centers that WPI has uh, in the United States and overseas. And I, I strongly recommend you to uh, check the project center and see where our students do these projects. It's one of the big differentiators uh, uh, of between WPI and other institutions. And it's a major part uh, of our uh, curriculum. Uh, in addition to the MQP, the major qualifying project, which I'm gonna discuss uh, in a while. Then you have to take two courses in uh, social sciences, one third in uh, 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 physical education. Then you have three courses in free electives. These uh, free electives uh, can be used for a minor or can be used for a double major. Uh, then we have 10 courses in math and 20 courses in aerospace engineering topics. And this is how now uh, we get into the um, details of the aerospace engineering degree. So in math, we require that you take a calculus sequence all the way to ordinary differential equations and matrices and linear algebra. Some of you are gonna knock off some of this calculus because you're gonna count with 80 credits. All of this information is available uh, in, uh, in, in admissions office. Then you take two courses in physics, one in chemistry, and one in what we call atmospheric and space environments. This is a course that we give with the physics department. And then all aerospace engineers take a series of four courses in fluid dynamics, in propulsion and energy, flight dynamics controls, materials and structures, uh, and also of course in experimentation. So these are again, uh, right, repeated topics and themes here that uh, uh, make aerospace systems what they are. And then because our degree is in aerospace engineering and not aeronautical and astronautical, we have two tracks where students split. Usually this is done in their fourth year and the students take um, 
and courses which are specific to the truck. Again, they're split in fluid dynamics, propulsion, flight dynamics controls, etc. So the aero truck has a, a, course, a set of five courses which are unique to the truck. The astronautics truck has unique courses, uh, again, which are unique to the truck. And then everybody takes an aircraft design or a spacecraft design, right? Whether you are in the aero truck or astro truck, you're going to take either one of these courses. And then you do the MQP. The MQP is a major qualifying project. You use this as a senior in its equivalent to three courses. And then you do select one course that belongs to the other track. Uh, so you can blend things. So that at the end, you come with a degree in aerospace engineering, which means uh, you, it allows you to work either in aircraft systems, rotorcraft, um, uh, the uh, delivery systems, rockets, or uh, spacecraft. And uh, uh, when we designed the program, we opted for the aerospace engineering in order to provide flexibility to our students uh, and uh, uh, because of the longevity we, we expect in, in uh, one's career, and also by the fact that we often move from one system to the other as engineers. So that's the other differentiator that you need to keep in mind when you're picking uh, aerospace engineering departments. If you want to opt to there, there are departments that offer specifically the aeronautical engineering degree or the astronautical engineering. We offer the aerospace engineering degree, and so do most of the departments that you're going to be uh, looking around. So these are the elements of the uh, BS degree in aerospace engineering, and that's a typical schedule. It's a sample program. Uh, you start in the first uh, three terms with the basic requirements, math, physics, and then immediately from D term, you start taking aerospace engineering courses. All these color coder, coded courses are aero engineering. You start with materials, for example, into the materials. You take the space environments and air, and air environments course, and then you start with uh, fluids, uh, structures, etc., all the way uh, till the uh, fourth uh, year. You see this term here is empty, as I, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, 15 terms is the normal stay. And of course, there are open uh, spots here, as you realize, because students uh, fill in there the other requirements, the humanities, the IQP, the social science, the PE, uh, um, and the PE requirement, and also three electives. So this is a typical program. WPI students, each one designs the program. Once you join in uh, in C term, you're going to be asked to pick an advisor and one of your, uh, uh, an advisor from your major. If you pick the aerospace engineering major, your advisor will be one of the faculty that are, uh, from the aerospace engineering department. And this faculty will tra track your perform your schedule from D term and on all the way to, to graduation. And because we have a lot of students who pursue also the BSMS program, I will speak uh, briefly about it. The, actually, the advisor follows them throughout the BSMS program. Uh, so uh, you're going to have this close interaction with your advisor, who's going to be guiding you, not only about course, but also about projects. And uh, uh, those of you who want to uh, go to graduate school, of a graduate school and employment as well. So uh, you will keep your advisor for the entire stay at WPI. Uh, now, let me talk a little bit now about the other things that make our program unique. So I'm going to talk about projects and research opportunities. I mentioned the IQP, and I think uh, uh, all of you will uh, take a moment and look into the global project program at WPI, a unique program uh, in the country. Then the MQPs are the senior projects. They're specific to the major. It's a degree requirement WPI. All uh, programs have design courses, senior design courses, but there is no department that I'm aware of that requires every uh, major, every uh, senior to do a three course equivalent major design project. So that's different to WPI. So you work with groups and you do projects. I have some of them here and we're gonna update uh, now our uh, website with the projects that we developed this year. Obviously we had a break uh, during the COVID year. So we typically design rockets, high power motor rockets as we call them. These are, are not the typical rockets that you've seen in uh, hobby uh, star, uh, shops, right? We take them to competitions, etc. We do uh, air vehicles for design competition. This is one for the ASAE. We participate also in the DBF, Design, Build and Fly competition of AAA. We do CubeSats and we do a lot of uh, work also with autonomous vehicles. So all the systems that you saw uh, in the very beginning of my presentation, are part of our MQPs annually. And we do also other projects that um, are not obviously depicted here, 
but every year we do touch upon each one of these major air, air, aerospace uh, systems. And they, these are teams that work uh, in groups of eight, seven students, 10 sometimes, all split in sub-disciplines. They work together with an advisor or, or a couple of advisors, and uh, they build uh, hands on uh, these devices, test them, take them to competitions. Uh, now, we're doing really well in these competitions. A recent one, for example, the 2022, this is the region one, which includes all the universities from Virginia all the way to Canada. We uh, won third place in the team uh, category. And in this year, we had a design and analysis of uh, six new CubeSats. Again, these tiny CubeSats uh, for an aerospheric mission. That was a specific design of a CubeSat that was uh, uh, designed to fly a specific instrument uh, for uh, aerospheric science. So we do very well in these competitions and, uh, and other as well, right? In aircraft competitions, as you see here, happy faces of our students. Um, uh, we have a team now which is uh, traveling to this year's SAE competition, and also a team which is traveling next week in the DBF uh, competition. One is in Kansas, the other is in California. So I don't have data to, uh, to share with you for uh, our 2022 uh, competition. Uh, we have also a lot of other uh, activities uh, uh, that make our community vibrant. The IAA Student Club, I'm going to talk about it uh, as well, but that allows also students especially uh, first year and second year students to join uh, upper classmen in, uh, in uh, club activities. Uh, we have also summer research programs and opportunities for our students. Uh, these are funded by various uh, organizations. NASA is one of them, the Space Grant Consortium. And the students stay here for a duration of seven weeks, six, seven weeks at a time, and they do work in laboratories. Our students also have uh, opportunities in the summer through internships and uh, uh, other opportunities for, from uh, national laboratories, NASA, for example, or uh, Sandia and uh, other um, uh, facilities where they uh, support uh, internships. Um, I mentioned community, and that's a very important part of what we are. We have very active clubs in aerospace engineering. Our students are very highly motivated, and we're a tight uh, community. Uh, so we have three major clubs. One is the Sigma Gamma Tau. This is the Aerospace Engineering Honor Society. Uh, you see them here, happy, smiling. Uh, they are involved in a lot of community outreach, tutoring, peer advising. So they help students with their homework, as you would expect, right, from our Sigma Gamma Tau students. And that's a great uh, community uh, uh, building uh, uh, functionality. Uh, they also do alumni networks, so that's uh, uh, very important, right? We have TAs and we have uh, uh, PLAs that we deploy in our classes, but they also serve on the side uh, on a volunteering basis, and it's a great, uh, um, uh, they, they provide a great service to our community. We have also the Women of Aeronautics and Astronautics, uh, WA, one of the few, uh, uh, the first clubs actually of uh, women in engineering, WPI, we're very proud of them. And again, they do a lot of uh, outreach. They do help again, like our Sigma Gamma Tau. They have uh, paint nights, they have alumni talks, they bring alumni here. They do network working, obviously distressing events were as a major uh, during COVID years. Uh, so uh, again, uh, a great uh, community to join. And uh, finally, we have the AAA Student Club, one of the largest clubs at WPI. They have three uh, sub uh, activities, uh, UAV Club, High Power Rocketry Club and the Model Rocketry. Uh, you see, they do also social events. They do, uh, they're involved in UAVs. Uh, obviously, you see the difference between the Model Rocketry and the real High Power Rocketry Club. Actually, they're taking it this year. I believe they're going to New Mexico. Uh, and this is just a club activity. And here you see uh, all the way from first year students to seniors. This is not the MTP. This is not the projects we do, but something, uh, 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 just a, a special from the club. So very active. This club has, uh, the IAA has about 150 members, not only aerospace engineers, but minority, but majority of them are. So we're a very active community. And I, and, I, and I hope you take this message because in addition to academics, we're trying to make sure that our students are happy, they're enjoying them, their time here, and they build these uh, um, uh, connections uh, early on and uh, a sense of uh, community is important for us. Um, again, a few more uh, pictures from students of ours in, uh, for this uh, MQBs. 
And now before I, I finish and in the next uh, three minutes, I promised about half an hour, I'm gonna to stick to that. Um, we have a very successful BSMS program and the BSMS program is a five-year program. Now, a lot of our students completed actually less than five years. Uh, but if you follow a nominal path without, uh, um, without uh, AP credits, uh, uh, then uh, it's, it can be done in five years. I, I mean, there are benefits to this program uh, in terms of cost. It's cost effective, right? If you were to pursue a master's uh, once you graduate, it's going to cost you a lot more, uh, both in terms of money and in terms of time. And you double count some credits and you start working as a senior, as a, uh, uh, earlier on with your advisor in order to, to do the BSMS. There's no application requirement. Uh, all of the students who are admitted as uh, in the BS program are de facto admitted also in the BSMS if they want to pursue it. But in terms of planning, it takes some initiative on behalf of the student uh, to notify the advisor and, and get the process going. And I'm going to show you the benefits of this program uh, um, uh, later on. Now, let's uh, close now on uh, career uh, uh, paths for aerospace engineering. So here is a list, and this is a partial list of, of, of companies that have employed our, our, our graduates, both BS and BSMS uh, students. So you see here uh, all major companies that you can recognize, the Lockheed Martin, for example, is here, uh, Pratt & Whitney before, now Raytheon Technologies, General Dynamics, et cetera, British Aerospace, and then a lot of other Aurora Flight Sciences, a lot of smaller companies that you may not uh, recognize as well, but they are the companies that I mentioned before, right? The backbone of aerospace and defense. And I'm not done, right? There's a lot more right here. Uh, now we have also uh, known aerospace and defense companies that employ our students from Amazon Robotics, obviously, right? They need aerospace engineers to do their UAVs uh, all the way to PepsiCo. And we have also students uh, moving on to government or in our services. And also graduate schools, you see here the list of where we place our students. So all together, we have very, very good, excellent placement, uh, both in terms of uh, industry, government, and also graduate schools. And uh, here is now where uh, uh, you see our placement rate, the success rate, and, uh, and uh, our salaries. We don't have the 2021 data yet. And obviously, 2020 was the uh, COVID year, so you, you saw a little bit of a dip here. And also a success rate usually is the 90s, upper 90s, and I'm sure uh, we must have recovered by 2021 in the upper 90s. And now you do your MS, the BSMS, it adds at least $10,000 plus in your uh, initial uh, starting salary. And also it places you at a different space in your industry. If you join WPI, we have open house events. We discuss this uh, throughout your uh, studies. You will hear about it and your advisor will be from making sure that uh, you are aware of all these uh, opportunities. So with that, I'm gonna stop my presentation and uh, uh, thank you for, um, for participating. And we are here now, Ian and I, to answer your questions. So again, folks, any questions that you guys have, go ahead and use that Q&A feature, which again should be at the top or the bottom of your screen. And we'll be happy to uh, get those answered for you. Now, Professor, one question that I'll actually ask just to kind of get us started off here is, you know, thinking about how things work at WPI and, and the institution as a whole, um, what do you think separates our aerospace program from um, another, you know, just as great program at another institution? That's a great uh, question. And uh, in terms of the quality of the uh, education, all aerospace engineering programs are at par. As you realize, we design systems that are uh, um, very uh, complex and we design them uh, uh, with extreme uh, um, uh, conditions, right? And, uh, and the design requirements. So you are gonna be trained and become an excellent engineer no matter where you are. What differentiates WPI is they are project-based uh, curriculum and education. And I explained the two projects, major projects that we offer, the IQP and the MQP. Uh, the pace of the courses that we have, the term structure that we have, and a big differentiator is the size. At WPI, you will have this one-to-one -one interaction more than other places. I mentioned that uh, we do uh, 
Um, we have 10 in the faculty for about 300 students, but that's not the student to faculty ratio because of the projects that we do. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of time on one to one opportunities that you're not going to have in other places. And so I think these are the primary differentiators between us and other universities. Awesome. So next question here. Uh, does WPI have the facilities to support the development of liquid rocket engines? Um, we don't uh, to the level uh, um, at some, at, okay, at some uh, level, uh, yes, we, as I mentioned, we have a combustion laboratory and we do some uh, uh, work uh, uh, there, uh, but um, at the undergraduate level, uh, the, the propulsion systems that we work and you're going to work uh, uh, involve uh, uh, some small turbine work and then uh, in uh, working with uh, MQPs, for example, you may do some specialized, and in the past we had some specialized projects in uh, uh, propulsion, but uh, uh, probably not to the extent as um, uh, in uh, other places where they may have much larger facility. There are also issues of safety when we're talking about propulsion. So there are things that you can do at the undergraduate level that are uh, limit the, the involvement of undergraduates. Awesome. All right, moving right along here. Uh, so in your experience, uh, do aerospace majors have any trouble finding careers outside of the aerospace sector? Uh, okay, that's a good question. And you know, uh, when I shared my, sorry, now I'm gonna have to zoom very quickly. Uh, let's go to the employment. I should have stayed on that. Um, I shared here companies that are non-aerospace and defense. Um, take a look at them, right? And um, it's, it's, a, it's a list which is a growing. And uh, now, why would an aerospace engineer go and work outside the aerospace engineering sector? I don't know, right? I, don't, I cannot answer that question. Uh, but for sure, because the degree is uh, quite um, a general, you can uh, uh, hop onto any mechanical engineering job, for example, as an aerospace engineer. The other way around is very difficult. So you get the training uh, which is specialized for aerospace engineering, but definitely you can do any kind of mechanical engineering work. Uh, definitely not uh, er, er, some work in uh, electronics uh, engineering, electronic engineering or computer science. You wouldn't be able to, to uh, uh, aim at those jobs unless you do minor. And a lot of students, a lot of our students do minor in electrical engineering or computer science. So the answer is absolutely yes, you could. But I will never trade an aerospace engineering job with anything else, okay? <laughs> good answer, good answer. Um, all right, so next question here. Uh, and I'll kind of put two questions together a little bit. So let's go for how many students are typically enrolled in the aerospace program each year? And then uh, kind of a follow-up to that is what's the, the split in students who go the aeronautics track versus the astronautics track? Okay, uh, we have, uh, we grant about 60 degrees per year. Uh, bachelor of Science degrees and about 30 to 40 uh, MS degrees. Uh, so that's the size, right? Now, the, um, that also gives you a sense of the size of classes that you're going to be attending. Our early classes uh, tend to be, tend to have 60 students per class. And then as we move, you move on, uh, then classes uh, drop down to 40, 30, or even 20. And of course you have the MQP where you have three course equivalent where you are with six other or seven or maximum 10 other students, right? With one or two professors. So a lot of one-to-one -one interaction there. Now, the split between aeronautics and astronautics is uh, something that uh, uh, varies over the years. And uh, really in terms, I'm gonna show you here the, the actual, uh, the, the impact. Now, as an, uh, aerospace engineer, you're going to take all of these courses, right? These are 11 courses which everybody's going to take, take, all of you. These are the core courses, regardless of the track. And then you split in the track. But if you see a lot of this, um, so the tracks themselves distinguish by, are distinguished by five courses. And then you take also a course, it's required to take a course from the other track, so it drops down to four. So there's no really differentiator, too big of a differentiator between the tracks. But this is the mandate by ABIT, right? The, the body that accredits our program. And that's why we claim that at the end, you're an aerospace engineer. The track uh, disappears. But some students have, uh, you know, they, they like more the aeronautical versus the astronautical. And as I said, that varies. Uh, traditionally, we had more students in the astronautics track. 
despite the fact that most of the jobs are in the aeronautical track, track. And if you go out in industry, probably 70% of the jobs are in the aeronautical track. But astronautics is more attractive. I am also a space guy, right? So I love it. Uh, so uh, it's, um, it's something that, you know, if you really like space, uh, most likely you're going to pursue the astronautics track. But in terms of a career path, you're going to be an aerospace engineer, right? So that's, that's uh, something that you need to, to remember. Uh, so I hope I answered it. it. Took a little bit longer, but it is. It was a. It's a very good question. Yes, definitely. And then, as kind of a follow up to that, um, off the top of your head, do you know roughly how many students are in like the BSMS program for Aero? Yes, as I mentioned, we graduated fifty to sixty, and now we're almost fifty percent of our students who pursue the BSMS program, and this is a growing. It's a growing trend and it's uh, growing everywhere, actually. Uh, if you go out in industry, the master's uh, degree is pretty much required these days. So if you don't do it while at school, most likely you're gonna have to do it while you're working. And that's a tough uh, thing to, to handle because you're gonna have to, uh, uh, to juggle a full-time job uh, with uh, uh, the requirements of a master's uh, degree. Some companies used to pay in the past, um, a lot of them now they are, uh, getting away from that uh, model because the BSMS now has become so pro pro prolific and part integrated part of the of the uh, BS degree. So chances are, I would say in four years, we're probably going to reach 70, 75 percent of our graduates um, pursuing the BSMS. Very, uh, it's very efficient to do it uh, while you are a student and especially WPI with AP credits and summer courses. We have a lot of students who graduate with their master's degree in four years four years, think about it, right? You can start a career in industry in, uh, you know, having a salary in the 80s, uh, 80,000 per year plus, and obviously, right, position yourself in a higher level than what a, a BS uh, uh, graduate would have. So it has become a very, very attractive option. Yeah, and I mean, just anecdotally, the couple of students that I know who work in the admissions office who are aero engineers are uh, two of them are doing the BSMS. So definitely pretty common for us, I'd say, too. Um, so next question here. So um, thinking about, uh, you know, academic options, how hard would it be to combine aerospace engineering with a non-engineering major, like, let's say, computer science for one? Well, it's a wonderful question. And we have uh, several of our students who do that. Uh, you would do a double major. And as a double major, obviously, you're going to have to take, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer. Uh, uh, so, but you have, remember, three uh, uh, courses to begin with. And then you have one empty slot or out of the 15th, the 15 terms that I mentioned. So you have that. And then you have the summer. So it can be done with a little bit more work and students do it. A combination between aerospace and uh, computer science is, is that's a great combination. And uh, what we encourage our students is to do a minor, at least in computer science. Uh, you know, all systems, aerospace systems are heavy in, uh, in, uh, in IT, right? And AI and uh, computer science and electronics. So, and we cannot fit all of them in an aerospace engineering degree. So we strongly encourage our students to do that as a, as a minor, and a lot of them do. And they have an enormous, uh, 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 impact in industry and great uh, job opportunity because that's co that combination is just a wonderful combination. Yeah, and I mean, um, just to add on to that a little bit, I guess, um, we always tell students there, there's nothing that's technically impossible to, to fit into four years here. Some things are definitely easier than others, but if you come in, you have an idea of what you want to dual major in or minor in, dual minor in, whatever, uh, talk to your academic advisor, you can kind of set a plan for yourself and make sure that you can accomplish what you want to in the time frame that makes the most sense to you. Uh, we have one more thing to add for the double majors. Uh, we uh, do, uh, you know, as a double major, you're going to do an MQP that satisfies both majors. And that doesn't mean you have to do two MQPs. What we do, we do an MQP, which is equivalent to four thirds uh, units. So we have two advisors, we do them routinely. And uh, one advisor is from your double major and one is from the one of the majors. Uh, so uh, we work in synergy with other departments to, you know, to make this happen. And uh, we have several of those every year. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, so thinking about, you know, things maybe outside of academics for a minute here, uh, are there folks who major in aerospace who are also in one of the ROTC programs? And if so, has the workload been manageable with ROTC? 
Yes, uh, uh, WPI has an ROTC, uh, uh, the Air Force ROTC is uh, housed at uh, WPI, but we have also Navy ROTC and Army ROTC. I believe Navy is in uh, Holy Cross. Um, I think uh, Navy is Holy Cross and then Army's Assumption, I want to say. Army's Assumption. So we have um, students from all uh, three branches and uh, they do great. They are integrated with our, uh, the rest of the program. They have their own uh, curriculum, obviously, that they uh, take also um, uh, for, for in, in their branches. But um, we have several of uh, uh, ROTC students every year. Never had an issue, and they did wonderfully in our program. And um, uh, so and we, we welcome them in our program. Uh, so similar question here, just, you know, different activity. So uh, roughly how many folks in the aerospace major also participate in a sport? Hmm. Now you got me on that. You know, we have this one third uh, PE, uh, which is uh, required for everybody. But we do have uh, students who are, uh, I know, for example, we have students who are, were members of the football club, the soccer club. Uh, you know, I love soccer, so I used to watch. Uh, we had uh, uh, students in the wrestling team, so uh, I don't have numbers, but uh, I guess it's probably uh, split um, equally in all majors. This is irrelevant to the major, so uh, we're as good in sports as in uh, rocket science, right? Exactly. And uh, yeah, anecdotally, I mean, I know one of our tour guides, um, MC Shea, is on the field hockey team and is an aerospace major as well. So um, just one example, but it is definitely doable for sure. Uh, all right. So next question here. Uh, so how are MQP projects chosen and funded? And uh, do students usually work with industry partners? Okay, the MQPs, uh, uh, we do have funded uh, MQPs with industry. Uh, we also have uh, occasion, on occasion funded MQPs uh, from uh, other agencies, the uh, MIT Lincoln Lab. We had MQPs done in the past with NASA centers. We used to take our students there. So it, it varies. Now, uh, the MQPs, however, the ones that we conduct here in the department, we fund those MQPs because we provide all of the uh, supplies. Now, some MQPs, like the design, uh, build the fly MQPs, we are working now to, to uh, have sponsorship of companies so we can fly their logos. And that also spares the entrepreneurial spirit in our students. So uh, all of the above are vehicles for us to fund uh, our MQPs. But remember the MQP is a degree requirement, so we're obligated to provide them. And uh, we have an allotment of uh, funding per student for every MQP every year. So we have a budget associated with our MQPs, no matter what. Awesome, thank you. Uh, next question that popped up here. Uh, how soon into your time at WPI do you have to decide whether you want to pursue that BS MS degree? Okay, um, let's uh, take a look into this uh, schedule here. This is a typical schedule. I've never had two students in my career here that follow that schedule, right? That sample program. Every WPI student is unique and they design their own schedule, right, with their advisor. So roughly speaking, let's say this is a nominal schedule, when you're gonna start thinking about your uh, BSMS is the junior year. So uh, junior year, you're gonna, we're gonna call you and you're gonna, we're gonna say, hey, if you're thinking about the MQP, about, so the BSMS, this is the time, and your advisor will sit down and draft a schedule. Because a lot of you, a lot of students actually, they are, um, you know, and detailed in sophomore year, they already started talking about MQP, right? Because they have pushed the AP credits, et cetera. So, but nominally it's a junior year where you're gonna start thinking about the BSMS. And again, there's no application. Uh, all you have to do is start taking the graduate courses that we require you. You need to take a couple of graduate courses as an undergraduate in order to matriculate in the BSMS program. And that's about it. So uh, a lot of our students during the senior year, right? Uh, they take a lot of graduate courses, and uh, some of them also make the decision during their senior year. So um, uh, there is a lot of flexibility. 
Definitely. All right. So uh, no more questions in the Q&A now. Uh, again, if you folks have those, we do have maybe a couple more minutes here to answer them for you. Um, one thing that I'll do, um, if you folks want to get in touch with a student or anything like that, maybe um, in the program, I'm just going to leave the admissions email address here for you, uh, which will hopefully uh, allow us to get you in contact with them. You can shoot us an email with any questions that you have, uh, and we can source out a student to answer that for you. All right, a couple more questions here. Uh, so if you want to study abroad during junior year, what universities have aerospace programs we can go to? So I think I'll actually answer that one if that's all right. Uh, yeah. So for um, the IQP in particular, which is usually our junior year project, um, that's when most students will decide to go off campus. So about 90% of all students um, take that IQP project off campus. And um, our study abroad isn't your typical study abroad. Um, we don't send students to another university just to take other classes at that university. We instead uh, give you a project experience to do instead. Uh, basically for seven weeks out of your junior year, you'd be at a project center off campus somewhere, whether that's domestically, internationally, um, and solving a problem for um, community uh, that we're working with. So um, I'd be happy to you know, fill anyone in about that if you have any questions about how the IQP works or how studying abroad works. But uh, baseline is that um, you wouldn't be necessarily going to another university per se. All right, so uh, next question here. So have you seen students with um, a learning disability, maybe such as dyslexia, uh, thrive in this field? Um, yes, uh, WPI has um, a very well uh, structured uh, program uh, and um, uh, which um, facilit facilitates uh, 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 any kind of uh, uh, disability of that uh, nature. And uh, we have had students in our program who did uh, uh, great. Um, we have a, a whole team of uh, specialists who work with us and uh, they tailor the um, requirements, right? And uh, we offer um, a special, uh, um, you know, accessibility uh, and uh, also uh, uh, accommodations to our students. So uh, they are integrated in our uh, community and um, there's, I've never seen um, anybody um, uh, with a problem, right, uh, at WPI. So we're a welcoming community and we have all the means uh, to make sure that everybody uh, succeeds at WPI. So, and there's nothing unique about aerospace uh, or any other major for that matter. So um, none of this should be uh, any kind of uh, factor that limits somebody's dream. And especially uh, in aerospace, uh, we are more than welcoming everybody. Yeah, and I would say the the hard part is, or the competitive part is, is getting into WPI. So if you're an admitted student, you know you've already kind of passed that barrier. Once you're at the institution, there is a lot of support for you um, to to help deal with whatever you know disability or issue you might be going through, um, and you know stay on top of your academics and definitely thrive there. Uh, so next question here uh, is purchasing or in purchasing a computer uh, as an aerospace engineering student, is it best to purchase an Apple or Windows computer? This is the question that I always love. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll leave this to uh, you. Uh, WPI is, uh, you know, has a great uh, infrastructure in terms of IT. And, uh, you know, I didn't have time to talk about this, but this is also another differentiator, WPI. Uh, we have uh, an enormous uh, number of software which we deploy and we make available to students from CAD to um, MATLAB to, um, of course, productivity software, etc. And most of them are uh, running both on Windows and on uh, Apple uh, platforms and Linux for those who are uh, more into that uh, uh, domain as well. Uh, so um, WPI is really good at that compared to other campuses, right, in terms of IT support. Uh, but uh, preference is preference, you know, uh, so you choose your own. Um, I used to be an Apple uh, person and then I shifted to uh, Windows, but, uh, you know, that's your choice. 
Yeah, and I mean, um, just another thing too, just thinking about resources on campus. Um, of course, you know, buying your own computer is is a good idea, I would say, and it can make things a little more convenient for you. But if you don't have the means to buy your own computer, um, there are definitely options for using computers on campus that will have all of the software that you need for your classes. So um, that's always an option as well. And uh, most of those are Windows. So I guess if you want the familiarity for both, you know, that's up to you. Um, all right, folks. So it looks like we're coming up on 750 here. So I think that'll be our last question for the night. Um, so we will we'll call it a day there. Again, if anyone has any questions for us or you want to get in touch with students or anything like that, you can email the admissions office at admissions at wpi.edu. I left that in the chat as well. Uh, and we can definitely make those connections for you and uh, hopefully get your questions answered there. And then otherwise, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Professor. Uh, and I hope everyone has a great, great night. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, everybody. Good luck and um, the best uh, for your uh, selection, okay? I'm sure you're going to do great no matter where you go, but we would love to see you at WPI. Awesome. Thank you. Good night, everybody.